Today we have Andrew Johnson. He was born in 1964 near Skipton, North Yorkshire in the UK. He received a degree from Lancaster University in computer science in 1986 with a minor in physics. He worked as a software engineer and he worked on real-time process control and telecommunications for about six years. Then he decided he wanted to get into the teaching world and he spent two years as a lecturer on BTEC National and Higher Education National Diploma courses at West Knotts College in the UK. Then he moved back to working and he started in the field of mobile data. Uh, he now assesses disabled students for access to assistive technology for higher education. In 2004, he became active in campaigning for 9-11, and that's what brings us here. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Mike. Uh, thanks for inviting me on. Oh, no problem, no problem. It's, it's nice to have somebody that uh, knows their stuff, eh? <laughs> well, I hope. I try to. I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, hey, it's a bit more than the other guys, at least, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so so uh, today we're going to kind of focus on kind of more of the cover up, kind of your specialties of this. I know you've been documenting this uh, through various uh, YouTube things that I've downloaded and uh, other things too that you see um, your articles and stuff. Um, first of all, I was wondering if we could start just a brief introduction. Let's not get too much into this, but uh, controlled demolition versus, versus what is seen at the uh, World Trade Center complex. So if you just wanted to say a few words about that, like I said, we won't get too much in depth because we could go on for years. So um, yeah, take it away. Sure. Yeah. The, I mean, that's one of the main things that I was caught up in originally was this idea that someone put either bombs or, you know, controlled demolition charges into the towers and you rig them up to explode in sequence. And, you know, you get these classic sequences that are shown with these fire, as a, uh, two or three firefighters in a in the firehouse saying, oh, yeah, you know, these things popping out floor by floor. And, <laughs> you know, and uh, I think a lot of people have seen these and some people still think that that means bomb, bombs were used. But as Dr. Judy Wood has pointed out, uh, very you know, conclusively really in her research that if we had any method which essentially is, perhaps she would put it, cut the building into chunks, then those chunks would fall to the ground and they would create a seismic signature and they would damage things on the ground or near the ground, such as the bathtub and the, uh, the mall stores, for example. And these all survived the destruction of the towers pretty much, you know, basically intact, um, obviously, there was some damage, but not commensurate with the size of the buildings. And, for example, there's a, a video that, uh, or a, a documentary that people can watch called um, The Miracle of Stairwell B, which I believe was made for UK television. And um, 14 people, including a number of firefighters, survived in Stairwell B, which was, uh, I think, four or five floors up uh, in the base of one of the towers, I think, the North Tower. And um, these guys survived. They essentially walked out pretty much, you know, maybe with a couple of broken bones, a few a few fractures and so forth. But basically, OK, they could get out under their own steam. Um, so when you start to look at the evidence in Dr. Wood's book, in the videos that she's done and one or two that I've kind of done as well, you can you can clearly see that this essentially amounts to another another uh, cover story really for what really happened to the to the world trade center and what happened on 911 so that's really i suppose when i realized that dr wood was correct and that that ha happened for me probably late in 2006 early 2007 i knew that what she said was right um and i began to do further investigation and i realized that there was an ongoing cover up which I, I, at that time in 2006, had in, inadvertently become a part of, having initially not realised that I had been, you know, uh, sort of tricked, uh, if you will, into being part of the cover-up of what actually happened. Wow. So, again, too, the people can just go and they could download these pictures from government archives from the Library of Congress and just look at uh, the smoking gun for me is the, the picture where it shows the empty part where I think one WTC 1 or 2 used to be and there's just nothing and then you see WTC 7 standing in the back. So we know that that is uh, before 5.20 p.m. in the afternoon. And uh, like I said, anybody can go and see this information. Uh, you guys, you, Dr. Wood, Dr. Morgan Reynolds, um, aren't really 
much like the Richard Gages and the Architects Engineers because you're actually saying, hey, look at this stuff. Here's the links for it. Here's the data. Whereas I get the feeling from the Architects and Engineers uh, side of things, it's just like, all right, well, we did all these reports, you know, we'll, we'll go into that later. But but I uh, the amount of data that Dr. Wood has given, it dwarfs anything that any of the other quote unquote organizations have done. So uh, again, a lack of debris, that, that's another smoking gun and lack of sound, uh, as you saw that I was talking about, uh, I had mm -hmm. the privilege to be at a controlled def demolition back in, uh, when was it, July? And um, and I was on the front lines, I was in the media pass, the cops, uh, the cops pushed everyone back, you had to have a pass to get there, I believe I was a thousand feet. And I'll tell everybody, if there's a controlled demolition, there's no mistaking it. Um, you get shaken, your teeth get rattled by every blast. There is. You won't have one guy saying, oh, I heard a couple booms and then the guy next to him saying, what, bombs? I didn't hear anything. No, you you know something's going on. And uh, that was a 10 story building. I couldn't imagine for a 110 story building, let alone two of them, let alone another 47 story building, uh, another 22 or 22 story building. Uh, it's just unrealistic to say that that's controlled demolition. And uh, what makes me laugh is when people see something like a little bit of red dripping from the tower and say, oh, no, that's the thermite. That's it. That's what did it. They don't even stop to think how can even thermite do the damage that was seen in there so uh, i'm sure you you view it the same way too well essentially yeah i mean uh, after i was initially kind of tricked i suppose you know people often take uh, apparent creden credentials and their impression of a person you know if this person seems sincere or they seem to be doing the right thing or for example they just disagree with the official story you know if anyone who disagrees with the official story is kind of seen as a friend because you know everyone else agrees with the official story and agrees with you know in illegal invasions of countries and so forth so if somebody comes out and says oh yeah I, I know the official story is false and it was bombs in the building you you, you know people who are skeptical of, of 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 the official story are more inclined to agree with them but then if you were to turn around to them at a later point and say you know oh well actually that's that's just another trick and um you know basically uh you know they're, they're going to say well why do you say that you know they're not going to believe you because they don't want to think that they've they've been, they've been tricked i mean that that essentially happened to me uh when i found out about this uh, Stephen E. jones character that he'd actually falsely uh claimed that thermite was um one of the destructive components used you know uh, to take down the towers, and then you've got people like Niels Harrett, who were running back up for him uh, in 2008, and, 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 and since then, you know, he's a Danish chemist. I mean, heaven's sake, you know, a chemist should know what thermite is and what thermite looks like when it reacts. Yet this uh, Niels Harrett guy, I mean, it's very, very simple, really. People try to make it complicated, but if you just literally Google, you know, thermite reaction and either just look at some still images or, you know, some short YouTube videos, you'll see basically in many of these videos, uh, 100 grams, 200 grams, 300 grams of thermite reacting in, in, in typically in something like a, fly, a flower pot. And it's, you know, it's an almost blinding glow. You know, you can't really, you can oh, yeah. just about look at it. So this... You know, it's very, very simple. You know, I can observe that. You can observe. You can look at it in a textbook or, you know, if you if you must go to Wikipedia, I, saw, I loathe. But if you must go there, you can find out about it there and the different types of thermite. But, yeah, a Danish chemist who allegedly teaches chemistry at a university, I think, in Copenhagen, in, Copenhagen, in Denmark, he says in a news broadcast that he thinks hundreds of tons, or sorry, tons, let's just leave out the hundreds. I'm not sure if he said that. I don't want to misquote him. Uh, people are very fond of misquoting Dr. Wood and myself, but I'm not going to misquote them. So Niels Harrett uh, says that tons of thermite were used. Well, you scale up this, let's, let's say half a kilogram, which I, I think it's not even, it's probably going to be 100 grams or less. You scale, you do the numbers and then look at the volume of light, you know, the, 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 sorry, the brilliance of light coming out and scale that up to, to, to two, two towers. It just, you know... It, do, it, doesn't, it, make, it doesn't make any sense. It's Correct, sense. correct. But at first, you know, I was taken in by this. I was taken this, I freely admit that I was taken in by this for probably a period of, uh, 
almost, well, probably at least a year, and maybe even up to 18 months before I was finally rid myself of this uh, this thing, this, this idea of thermite. And it's still a big problem to this day that people who think they know, you know, about 9-11 are posting stuff on Facebook about thermite or nukes or some combination thereof. And uh, it just it doesn't stack up. It, it seems like uh, people are people are willing to accept the story if, uh, say, it's somebody contrary to the official story. So you have like a Richard Gates speaking out against it and he's saying, no, I'm your friend. Come here. I've got the information you need. Trust me. You know, we'll go into more about him later. Uh, I also wanted to mention, too, um, if the evidence for thermite was so great, why wasn't it included in uh, the original request for connect uh, corrections that uh, Stephen Jones, I believe, partly filed to NIST? Um, and you could find Correct. now you could find a link to a page that says thermite, but it literally one result of thermite uh, you would you would say. I believe in one of your talks to go look for it and I did it myself and I can tell you right now that that's uh, the case so um, every time you hear them talk it's all oh, we have all this um, amazing evidence this this that and the other thing and yet they didn't include any of it in their RFC that's uh, correct that's correct that's very odd that's um, yeah so anyways um, again this kind of ties in before um, your first signs that you kind of noticed that there was a cover-up and um, how things have changed after you this is far further down the line but after you and mm -hmm. Judy Wood made the uh, Dr. Wood made the um, connection for the engine energy so so we'll start mm. with yeah signs of the cover-up first yeah so so I think really um you know, what? one of the things I think first made me rather uh, curious was that I'd heard talk, you know, because I was basically invited into this group which was called Scholars for 9-11 Truth, okay, so I missed out that part really. And I was invited by Jim Fetzer and Stephen E. Jones, uh, uh, and I was invited in as a full member of this group, and they basically had a kind of tiered membership um, and it was allegedly those that were seen to be full members had to be something like a tenured professor or, you know, have some kind of post like that. And I I wasn't that. For some reason, they invited me as a full member, but I didn't. I was only a very lowly academic. So that was immediately suspicious. But I, I just, I mean, to me, it wasn't that relevant because I thought we were a group of academics studying you know, 9-11 yeah. and trying to get... So so to me, it wasn't that relevant at that point. But later, I, I realized why they did that. For people listening uh, to uh, the the original Scholars for 9-11 group, that was kind of the kind of original group, right? The original 9-11 mm. group. For, it yeah, correct. Yeah. It, preceded, it preceded the Architects and Engineers group. Uh, and that the, the Architects and Engineers group was, was kind of started to come into being in 2007 which we'll probably again go into a little bit later but but so so i you know i was in the scholars for 9 11 truth group i've written about this in my free book free book which is called 9 11 finding the truth so you can google 9 11 finding the truth and my name and you'll find you know pages about that and you can download the book for free or you can get a paperback at cost price from lulu and um, so too. forth for yeah, audio yeah, books. That's what I listen yeps. to. It's 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 great, pretty good. Great. And to let everybody know, it, it costs a lot to produce any type of audio book, any type of book. In that, um, Andrew and Doctor Wood aren't the type of people that are making tons of money off this. Uh, you you just try it yourself. Uh, think, okay, I want a five hundred uh, page uh, book, uh, five hundred yeah page book uh, published. Okay, and mm -hmm. then just look on the internet of steps to do that, and you'll you'll start to see how expensive it is. So for somebody to do this like Andrew Johnson and put it out for free just so that you have the information i mean yeah you can maybe view that as oh he's a psyop this that and the other thing but it it's not reality the reality is he put hours and hours and hours of work into this and he didn't even talk about that i'm kind of just tooting his horn here it it takes a while and for somebody to offer all that for free not even covering their costs that's that's something and we thank you andrew for that because uh yeah yeah, I appreciate that. I just sort of ought to mention at this point, with, to, specifically with the audio book, that a lady called uh, Cindy Laverty, who um, lives in New York, I think, or um, near there, and she volunteered to actually make the audio book for me. Uh, and she did that all pretty much, you know, she just said, oh, you know, do you mind if I do it? And I said, I'd love you to do it, you know. <laughs> and as you say, it, I mean, the, the amount of time she put into that, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just unbelievable. And um, I have, you know, she told me recently she disclosed something to me, and I just thought, 
you know, well, how did he do it? You know, because it was like amazing what she did. Yeah. So I'd like to mention that. And uh, we didn't, we, I think we ended up with a couple of chapters not read. So, so a couple of the chapters like a, a bot voice, but, you know, um, by and large, it's, 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 you know, I think you'll find it very It's about the information. To... It's about, and exactly, I, I know yeah, a lot of yeah. people want a pretty, uh, pretty package thing, but hey, this is right, for free. Right. What do you expect? He didn't charge. Yeah. If you go to a normal studio, you're paying like a cheap studio here uh, is 30 bucks an hour, but in an average studio, studio you're paying anywhere from 70 to 200 bucks an hour you know and to get somebody in for audiobook yeah. work it, it doesn't it, it it's not feasible for some people so again thank you to cindy